hi guys you're welcome back to my youtube channel if you're just seeing my video you're welcome my name is stella okay so today we're going to be making this lovely dress um for a client okay so um it's going to be a very detailed tutorial now i decided not to be fast forwarding my video so long because some people complained so that we can actually make proper use of the video okay so um I'll be dividing this video into sections. So I'll first start with the drafting of the skirt, then we'll move to the draft to the drafting of the upper bodies. Okay, so it's very detailed, and you're free to ask any question, any area you need um, more clarity, and I'll be more than glad to assist you. Okay, so um let's start with the drafting now the first thing i did was to take the widest part of her body and since we're drafting the skirt pattern for now the widest part is her hip now her hip round is 44 inches and i divided that into two that will give me 22 so i went ahead to add two inches allowance to that and that's 24 so 24 over 2 that's 12 so the extra two inches is just for me to have an ease on the block. It's not like we are making proper use of it. Okay. So I'll go ahead and mark the 12 inches. Okay. For the front, because we're going to be drafting the front and the back skirt um, pattern at the same time. Okay. So I'm marking um, my 12 inches. Okay. For the front and 12 inches for the back. Now I'll go ahead and um, connect that with a straight line. Okay, so here we have it. I'm done. Now we'll go ahead and mark the skirt length from her waist. Remember that this is a dress. So when I'm referring to skirt, it's not a separate skirt. Okay, so from the waist to the floor, to the floor length is 41 inches. But I want it to be a bit um, on the floor. So I added extra 3 inches allowance. So that makes it 44. Okay, so I like to add my allowances on my pattern since I'm going to be working with a lace. All right, so I'll go ahead and connect that with a straight line, which I have done. Now, the next thing we'll do is to measure. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and label so that it will be very clear to all of us. So this is the center front and that's my center back. Okay, now the labeling is very important so that you'll be clear on um, what you're doing. Now let's proceed. So from her waist to her hip length is nine inches. I'm making a mark there. Okay. Then from her waist to her actual knee length is 21 inches. Okay. Then to the floor length is 41 plus our three inches that we have already marked. Now I'll repeat the same measurement on the back. Okay. Waist to hip nine, waist to actual knee. 21 and then waist to the floor length is 41 plus 3 inches then i'll go ahead and connect these points with um, a straight line okay okay so i've connected my points you can see now we need to label so that's my hip line there and that's my knee mind you this is her actual knee line okay so i'm also labeling for the back that's the hip line and that's the knee for the back okay so now that's the full length and that's the allowance the three inches allowance i'm also labeling for the back as well the full length and the three inches allowance okay so let's proceed with our markings all right so the first thing we'll do is to measure um her waist now her waist round is 37 37 over 4 is 9.25 so you place your tape from the center front and you measure it okay so and uh, you mark now we're adding one inch that allowance so i also added that now for the back before you measure your back waistline the first thing you need to do is to tighten the back and to do that we will go ahead and measure 0 0.75 from the center back line okay so I'm placing my tape on the center back line and I just measure 0 0.75. Now I'll make a mark there and I'll connect it with a straight line, okay, to the hip line. Okay, take note, that's from the center back line. 
So we tighten the center back line with 0 0.75, okay? That's the first thing you need to do before you measure out your waist. Now let's go ahead and measure the waist. The waist over 4 is 9.25 and we're also adding 1 inch that allowance, okay? So that's 9, that's 10.25. So, um... Okay, so I've marked that. Now, we'll go ahead and... Um, okay, so we'll go ahead and measure out our hip. Now, her hip round is 44. 44 over 4 is 11. Okay, so I just measured that. Remember, um, I'm placing my tape from the center back. Okay, now for the front as well. Let's also measure out her hip round, which is 11. Now it's time for us to connect from the waist to the hip line. So I'm connecting for the front from my waist measurement to the hip measurement now. I'm connecting it with a straight line. Okay. Now we'll also connect the back from the waist to the hip line. Okay. So let's proceed. Now, um, on the front, so we're going to tighten the knee line with two inches. So the first thing you need to do is to measure, measure out your hip measurement. And what we have there, her hip over four is 11. So we'll subtract two inches from that because that's how much I want to tighten the knee. So, and that will give us nine inches. Then I'll go ahead and, um, and uh, mark that on the knee line. Okay, then I'll also mark that on the full length and on the allowance. Take note, her hip round over four. Now I'll subtract, I subtracted two inches from that and I marked it on my knee line and on the full length. Okay, then I'll go ahead and connect with a straight line. And that's it for the front. Now let's move over to the back block. Okay. Remember that in the front, we tighten the knee with two inches. Now, on the back, we're going to divide that two inches into two. Okay, so that means it's one inch. Okay, now, um, for the placement, you go ahead and measure out your 11 inches, which is her hip round over four. So, you measure out that 11 inches and you, you mark it on, on the knee line. Remember that we're working with the back now. So I just measured my 11 inches, okay? And I marked it on the knee line. Now, the next thing to do is to go in by one inch from the center back line. And you go in by one inch also from the side, um, from the side back, okay? Then we'll go ahead and connect that with a straight line back to the hip, okay? So it's super straightforward. You will, whatever your hip round over four is, you measure that also. Repeat the same measurement on the knee line. Then you go in by one inch from the center back line and from the side back line as well. Now, at the end of the day, what you should have is nine inches, just like we have in the front. Now you repeat the same on your full length and the allowance because we're going to be extending those lines, okay? So after you mark, you just go ahead and connect your measurements back to the hip, okay? Can you see what I'm doing? So that's it. Now you transfer the same measurement to your full length and the allowance, okay? Can you see? I just measured out my 9 inches on the knee. So I'll repeat the same on the full length. So on the full length, it's the same thing. Go ahead and mark your 11 inches and then subtract 1 inch from from both sides so that you will have nine inches in the middle okay then i'll connect that with a straight line okay and here we have it our skirt block is almost ready so um let's go ahead and mark and plot our dart Remember our dart allowance of one inch, which we added to the front and to the back. It's time for us to plot it. So let's start with the front. 
Now, first thing to do is to measure your entire measurement on the waistline. And what we have there for the front is 10.25. So just um, fold your tape into two so that you can get the midpoint, okay, of the waistline. And at that point, you make a dot there, okay? And the next thing to do is, um, remember our, our allowance is one inch. So you're going to mark half inch on both sides, okay? So you're dividing the one inch into two. Now, from the hip line, I like to go up by two inches from the hip line, okay? It's not good for you to extend your dart to your hip line. So you go up by two inches and um, you connect it with a straight line back to the waist, okay? So to be sure that you're working with a straight line, I like to measure back my line okay so that you're sure you're working with a straight line and then you connect you connect with your pencil okay and then you connect to the dart legs as well okay so um the front that i'll close it okay um so but you need to slope your center front by 1.5 inches, okay? So I'm sloping my center front with 1.5 inches. Now, the essence of this is to eliminate every form of fold, okay, that you normally see in front of a dress or a skirt, okay? This sloping will help to eliminate that. Now, um, let's also plot our back that. But for the back that, I will be stitching it down on my fabrics. I'm not closing it. So you also measure the entire line, the entire waistline. Just place your tape, then fold it into two, okay? Then you make a mark at the midpoint, okay? Then at that point, remember our allowance of one inch, so we're dividing that into two. So we measure half inch on both sides. Then from the hip line also for the back, I also came up by two inches, okay? Then I'll go ahead and connect that um, to the waist using a straight line, okay? Then I'll also extend the, the dart legs of 0 0.5, okay, back to the 2 inches we just came up with from the hip line. And then we'll plot our dart. Also, note that um, when you're measuring the waistline, so you can get the midpoint for your dart, you will place your... Um, you place your tape after that 0 0.75 tightening that we did for the back, okay? You're not placing your tape at the center back line. You place your tape at the 0 0.75 tightening that we did for the back, okay? This applies only to the back. I just had to point that out. Okay, and that's it. Our dart is ready. So I'll go ahead and close my front dart because I don't want to stitch it on the dress. So it's only the back one that I want to work with. Now, for the back, um, from the waistline, I like to come down by 0 0.5, okay? This is to ensure that the dress will sit perfectly well on the waistline when you're done, okay? And that um, there won't be any form of bulging or squeezing, okay? I'm trying to eliminate every form of bulge, okay? So... So I've marked my half inch. Now the next thing to do is to close my dart temporarily. Remember I said that I'm going to be stitching this down on the dress. So you just lift one leg of the dart, okay, and place it on the other. Make sure it overlaps on it, okay? So make sure it overlaps on the second dart leg. And then I'm going to use a straight line to connect to that 0 0.5 inch I just came down with, okay, at the center back. Okay, so this 0 0.5 um, we're taking off from the back waistline is to ensure that the dress sits perfectly there, okay? I know it looks little, but it's when we are done that you will see the effect. Okay, and that's it. So this is our new um, waistline for the back, okay? So um, I'll go ahead and close my front waist that, okay? Remember I said that I will not be um, stitching it down on the fabric, okay? So... I want to go ahead and close it. So to close it, just like we did for the back, you lift up one dart leg, okay? And you you place it on the second dart leg. Make sure that it is, is, um, 
is staying right on top of the second that leg okay just like i'm doing then you place it on the second that leg like so then i'll use my tape my masking tape to tape it down now you can go ahead and stitch your front that that's optional but i just like to close mine okay i don't think i like seeing that that lines in front now remember our 1.5 inches we came down with okay from the center front now i'll go ahead and connect that you can use a straight line or you can use um, a slightly curved ruler i want to make it slightly curved okay so you connect that now know that if you're even if you're sewing just skirt or a dress so far it has a half cut you need to take off that bulge okay so you can take between one inch to 1.5 i don't like to exceed 1.5 so you just go ahead and place it okay okay so i just placed my curve okay and i'm connecting it to the waistline all right so and that's it our our skirt block is almost ready okay so that's my new waistline for the front and that's and that's also my new waistline for the back okay so i'll go ahead and um separate these patterns okay so that we can have the front and the back um block separate okay and here it is i've cut um the bow patterns now we'll go ahead to work on the front okay so um let me keep the back skirt block aside so we can focus on the front now um this skirt i want it to have a slight um flare or you can call it mermaid so is is um the front is straight but it's not straight straight so it's, it's going to have a little bit of mermaid now the allowance for them the, for the extent of the flare is three inches for the front okay I want it to look like a straight skirt in the front but it's not okay so um i just added three inches now we're connecting it from the actual knee length remember this is her actual knee length so we're connecting from the actual knee length to the three inches allowance that we just marked on the full length okay so you connect it with your straight line so i just did that now now the next thing we will do is to um eliminate that pointy edge okay so i just marked my 0 0.5 so from the full length you go up that line by 0 0.5 and then um, you connect it back okay using your curve okay and that's it um our front skirt block is ready we're not doing much alterations in the front now since i have the block and i have the the space i like to mark my um half inch joint allowance on the waist okay since the actual fabric we're working with is a lace i like to minimize my my stress if i'll put it that way so i'm marking my 0 0.5 um allowance on my waistline so that when i get my the fabric the only allowance i'll be adding will be the side seam allowance okay remember that we have added our allowance to the to the full length okay so now i'm also adding my 0 0.5 um jo joining allowance on the waistline so that leaves me with only the side seam allowance okay so you can go ahead and um, mark your 0 0.5 okay joining allowance on the waistline and you connect like i'm doing it's optional you can also leave your pattern without any form of allowance then when you're transferring to the fabric you can now add all your allowances these are all optional okay you make your choice but i like to add my 0 0.5 joint allowance on my waist and on my full length if i'm working with a lace fabric okay so and that's it so i'll go ahead and cut out the front okay and that's it the front uh block is ready so 
um when it's time we'll get our fabric okay so the hip um side you can either raise it up um like i just did and place it on your fabric or you can press it down it's not going to affect anything it's not going to affect your measurement okay so that's it now i'll go ahead and bring the back um pattern all right so this is the back pattern i went ahead to um attach extra paper on the sides okay for our alteration now remember our marks okay our initial markings so and uh, remember that in the front we added three inches okay as our flare allowance on the side front okay so i'm also adding my three inches on the side back as well remember this is the side back that I just added the three inches. Now I'll connect it to the knee line. Okay. So using a straight line, you connect that to your hip. Uh, I'm sorry. Using a straight line, you connect that to your knee line. Okay. Like I'm doing. Okay. So I'll go ahead and darken that line with my marker pen. Okay. And that's it. Now, remember that on the front, we came up the line, okay, by 0 0.5. I'll also go ahead and mark my 0 0.5, okay, and I'll connect that using my curved ruler, just like we did in the front. Now, this is to eliminate the pointy um, look, okay, so that that point does not look very um, sharp or pointed. Okay, and that's it. I, I'm done marking that part. Okay, now let's move over to the center back. Okay, so for the center back, um, the first thing we need to do is to come up from the knee line by 5 inches. So you place your tape on the knee line and you go upwards by 5 inches and you make a mark there. Okay, now to know the extent of the train that we want, okay, from the full length, um i measured 8.5 inches okay so from this from the full length you place your tape remember from our actual measurement okay and um you measure out 8.5 inches and you make a mark there now that's how wide i want my um, my train to be okay so i'll go ahead and connect my five inches mark okay to the 8.5 inches mark that we just made now so i'll connect that with a straight line okay then i'll also use my marker pen to darken that line so it will be visible for us to see okay so that's it now to know the extent of my tail okay um i'll go ahead and mark out um 2.5 inches okay so the first thing you need to do is to extend our three inches allowance okay by the full length okay just like i'm doing so that you can see your your working lines very clear so that's the first thing you need to do okay so to know the extent of your tail now um i made mine 2.5 inches okay because i don't want it to be excessively long so this is a minimal um dress so my tail length is 2.5 inches now um i'll go ahead and mark that then the next thing for us to do is to use our curve okay just draw your um your curve line to go and meet that 2.5 inches mark okay that we made now i first went in with my pencil so um when i was okay with my marking okay then i used my marker pen to make that line visible now i would advise you go ahead and use your pencil first um so that you can see um your line if you're okay with it then you can now go ahead and use your marker pen okay so that's what i'm doing and here we have it our back pattern is ready um i like the curve so i'll go ahead and cut out using my scissors so we'll cut 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 okay just watch the lines i'm cutting 
Now, I just remember something. Remember that in the front, we added a half inch um, drain allowance to the waist. So I am also going ahead to add my half inch on my waistline as well. So that when I'm transferring to my fabric, it's only my side seam allowance that I will add. Okay, so I'm done adding my 0 0.5 drain allowance on the waist. And you also need to label, okay, because we cut out some of the labelings out. So I just label, that's my side back. And the other side that we have our tail is our center back. Okay, so I'm done cutting and our pattern is ready. Okay, now the next thing we'll do is to transfer it to the fabric. So I'll transfer it and I will show us what next to do. Okay, so I've transferred my pattern to the fabric. Okay, so the first thing I did was to cut out, um, to trace out the pattern on a doll face satin. Okay, so I, um, I cut out two pieces. Okay, so now this is the front. So I have um, two pieces of the doll face bridal satin. Okay, now one will be the interlining and one will be the lining. Okay, so I cut out two pieces of the bridal satin for the front um, um, piece and two pieces of the doll face bridal satin as the back, um, for the back as well. Okay, so I also went ahead to cut out the lace fabric for the front and the back. Okay, so the first thing I will do is to pick one of the doll face satin, okay, and then stitch the lace on top of it. Okay, so I went ahead to spread it open so that we can see it clear. Now, I'll go ahead and place the lace on top of the bridal satin. Now, I'll take it to my sewing machine and I'll stitch it on top of it, okay? I'll just stitch very close to the edge, maybe about 0 0.25, so round, just so that it will be um, secured. But I'll first pin it, okay, so it doesn't shift, then I will um, stitch it round. Now, if you don't want your, your lining to be the same length with your lace, you can go ahead and reduce your length, okay? Mine, I will just fold it in by one inch or 1.5 just so that it will be a little bit shorter than the lace okay so that's it for the front now this is the back um fabric as well i also have two pieces of the doll face satin okay just like the front one will be the interlining and the other will be the lining now if you notice if you look at our pattern you can see that it has a curve okay towards the side back now to achieve for your lace to follow that curve, um, I went ahead to cut to cut out um, my lace. Okay, now we'll join it just like um, we join our dart. Okay, so I use my scissors to just make a straight line there. Okay, then I'll take it to my sewing machine and I will join it using half inch from both sides. Okay, and when I'm done, it will follow the same curve line like our pattern so it's super easy and straightforward okay um when you're done joining it the stitches won't even show that's how good it will be okay now okay so this is um how it's going to be when um we're done joining it okay so i just wanted to demonstrate that for us to see all right so that's it i will also go ahead and spread my pattern and I'll place the lace on top of it and stitch round. Okay, now in cutting my lace, just to just as a form of control, I like to cut my lace a bit of excess. Okay, so that when I'm done stitching it on the doll face satin, I can now trim it to the exact um, size, especially when you're working with a lace that is a bit stretchy. Okay, now another thing I wanted to point out for us, um, the lace for the back, because of the trim, it was not enough okay so i joined and i'll take us through how i joined the lace um okay so um what i did i just went ahead to cut out um from the pieces that i have okay from the lace pieces okay now i just um cut that out so i placed it underneath um I placed it underneath from the waist. I didn't want to start joining from the from the hem. So I joined from the waist. Now that's the waist. So I just cut out a piece like so. Then I placed it under the, um, the main fabric, okay? I don't know if that's making sense, but I placed it underneath. And then 
I top stitched. I use the matching dress I top stitch and it's almost invisible. Okay, so that's how I joined mine. Maybe if you want to join yours from the hem, that would be fine. But I just didn't want to have any joining, okay, um, around my hem. So just, um, this is how I joined my lace, okay, so that it will be the exact length that we had earlier cut out on our pattern. So that's it. And um, I I'll take this to my sewing machine. I'll first secure it with a pin, with pins, okay. Then I'll take that to my sewing machine and I will just top stitch on top of it, okay. And that will be it. Okay, so I wanted to show us the allowances I added, okay. Now this is the back pattern. Remember that when we are cutting, we added three inches um, allowance, okay, at the full length. And we added a half inch for joining on the waistline, okay. So I went ahead to add um, my two inches, okay, um, allowance by the side, okay. And for my center back, I added my one inch, okay, from the waist to the hip line. Then from the, from the knee line, I added half inch to the hem. So I simply connected my one inch as um from my zip allowance to my half inch on the knee line, okay, and then half inch all the way to the hem. So that's it. So I'll go ahead and um and hold my dart, okay. Remember I told us that we'll be holding that on the on the back only. So I'll go ahead and hold my dart on the lining. I'll also hold my dart on the lace fabric of the back remember we've closed our darts for the front so we are not stitching down any darts okay so i will go ahead and hold my dart now after that um after i'm done stitching my lace on the interlining i'll go ahead and join my center back so i will use a, a loose stitch from my waist to my hip line because that's where my zip will be stopping Okay, then from my hip line, I'll use my normal tight stitch and stitch it down to the hem. I'll repeat the same on the lace fabric, okay? And when I'm done, I will come back and show us what next, you know? And that's actually it for the lower part. Okay, so I'll see us in the drafting of the upper part.